Hi, Gwendolyn. My name is Tiki, and I'm 20 years old. I'm looking forward to starting my own business, my first business, and selling my own product. But I'm not sure how to go about it. Okay, I, my my business, I want to I start with a, like a cream, like a body cream. And I know I need to do, like, build traffic, but I'm not sure how to, like, what's the next level to go about after I get my traffic. I'm currently a college student, and I need your help. Can you please call me at... Thank you very much. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. And today's session and lesson will be the five bones of building a successful business. The first bone is marketplace. You just heard the phone call, and I'm going to address that a little later. Essentially, what she's got to do is find a market that wants a cream that she can create versus creating a cream and hoping that the marketplace is going to say, ooh, we like it. Yeah, I'll take a little here and a little there. So that's the first thing. But when you're putting together your markets, your, your business, and looking at the marketplace, some things you have to understand. And when I put up my video, no eBay, no Amazon, and people kind of lost their damn minds, what I was saying is it kind of removes that research that you have to do. Let's take it in the case of Kiki. She's a, she's a college student, okay? So she already has a marketplace. So what she should do is find 5, 10, 15, 20 of her best friends or even strangers, which would be better, and say, hi, what kind of skin cream would you like? And, you know, since she's a member of the demographic, she probably has an ideal of what kind of cream a woman would want. But it would be even better to ask people like, hey, what are you missing? What do you wish you had? Then when she has enough people who say, hey, this is what we want, then create the cream. That's what she should do. So that's part of it. But the marketplace is huge because I'll go back to 2009 with my thing. I knew there was a marketplace out there, but I didn't think it was huge. That's why my goals were really low in the beginning. But when the television shows came on, the marketplace expanded. So first, it's marketplace first. Forget your products, forget all this stuff. Go to the marketplace, find something that you can create, that you can build, and that's where your money's going to be. This episode of the Hustler's Kung Fu Show was brought to you by Audible. You can take your choice of 180,000 books with a free trial offer from Audible. Do this. Go below the video, hit that first link, and take advantage of the offer. Also, I'm going to recommend that you get this book by It's Human to Sell by Daniel Pink. And to make the offer even sweeter for you, if you get the Audible deal, which is free, I'll give you a free ebook or free audiobook from my personal bookstore. How sweet is that? Just follow those simple directions below and let's get to the video. The second bone of building a successful business is product development. But product development is something that's going to happen once you have found your marketplace. Because these are the rules, or I should say the new rules of doing business in 2016 and probably beyond. Marketplace rules, marketplace dictates, marketplace is the boss. This is why marketplace research is so important. Let's just give you an example. Say you want to build a skateboard. And in your mind, you've got this ideal of a skateboard, you've got this ideal of uh, a certain type of truck, a certain type of material for the wheels, all of that's there. And you make it for yourself and it works. Then you talk to some of your friends, but because it works for you and they don't really like it. Then you go back to a drawing board, you make another skateboard and wheels and stuff. But these wheels are special and they can make you get a little bit more gravity, a little bit more air. Then all of a sudden, it's like, hey, I want to do what he's doing. Then the marketplace is going to signal that, hey, we like that. That's how it works. So create your product by looking at the marketplace first, pro product development second. What many people do is, I have an idea. 
I want to build something. I want to make something. I'm ready to jump into the marketplace. But the problem with that approach, and I've been guilty of it myself, is when you create a product that not enough people want that you can have the income level that you desire, it becomes problematic. So marketplace development and product development are like this. They just dovetail together. Because if you do your marketplace research correctly, it's not going to be hard to develop your product. And if it's not hard to develop your product, then we get to the good stuff. The third bone of creating a profitable business is creating your sales funnel, which is the good stuff because you've gone to the marketplace, you've got the information you need, you've built a product. Even with all that, you still have to create a funnel. There are many people who are under this misconception that if you just build a product, the people will come. That's romantic. Sometimes it happens. Most of the time it does not. Everybody has a sales funnel today. That's just how it is. Now, if you want to build a robust business, you got many options. Now, I have quite a few funnels. I have the direct to you uh, funnel in the videos. There's a sales funnel in videos. Yes, there's one in here too. You can do a sales funnel in the video. You can do a sales funnel through email. You can do a sales funnel through Instagram. So what is the sales funnel? It is a process where someone comes into your selling process. It, they come into your funnel and the reason it's called a funnel is it looks like one because there's the mouth. It's like this big. And as people go through your funnel, it gets smaller and smaller because a lot of people are going to go through the door, but they're not going to stay. They're going to say, ah, yeah, that's good enough. For, I don't want that. Or I do want that. And they're going to go further and further down the funnel. Once they exit the funnel, they exit into a sale and that's a customer. So they go from here being a prospect to the end of the funnel being a customer or a client. And there is a difference between a customer and a client. I'll talk about that in a future video. But that's the good part. So once you do your marketplace research, then you do your product development, then you create your sales funnel. There are many people who are really smart, create a sales funnel to help them develop the product. Now that's a totally different technique. Now let's talk about sales. Once they exit the funnel and then it's a sale, then your work really begins. Because once you capture a customer through the sale point, if you do it right, you can sell them more. I have some people who have bought every book, every course that I've put out, and I've had some people who are one and done. But that's how it is. But if you can get that customer to exit the funnel and become a lifelong customer, then you don't have to market to them anymore. It is exponentially way more profitable to get someone here and then 20 years later, you still have them in your sales process. Now, that takes salesmanship. That takes CRM, which is customer relationship management software. There's a lot of things that get into the sales process other than the sale. Now, what am I talking about to make it really clear to you? I'll go back to when I used to sell office furniture because... I went back and that's a business model that I'm going to adopt again and start going forward with it. When I would find a prospect, I would meet with them. Well, first it was a phone call, set the appointment, show them furniture samples, or even take them to showrooms if we had some locally available. And then it was this constant communication because my rule of thumb is I wouldn't send an email no earlier than once a week or sometimes once every eight days. Or... If I had some something exciting, something different, something really good, I would send them an email at that moment. Uh, it would be pretty much like, hey, Sue, I just got extra discounting on product X, Y, and Z. And we're getting ready to do an order, and this is how it works. If we order X amount of product, we get this discount, and I can actually lower the quote that I sent to you. Are you interested? And leave it alone. Because if they're operating on price, they're going to be highly, highly interested. But if they're operating on a project basis, which Sue was, and Sue was like, oh, man, that's great. But we really can't do that because there's some other pieces to this. But I really appreciate you letting me know. Thank you. And I did land that deal. But that's just some of the stuff that goes on when you're selling a bigger item. 
but that's very important bone in putting together your your business. That's an extremely important bone, handling those things and putting them together. Okay, now this is another part that if you're just selling physical products that you may not encounter, but this is called the back office. I'll use hustlerskungfu.com as an example. When someone comes in and buys a course, there's often there's a lot of functionality to the platform, and sometimes people may not understand something, they may forget to log in, or they may get lost. So there's another thing, back office customer service, which is really, really huge. Uh, yesterday I had someone that I didn't think was a good fit because they were having technical issues, but they really weren't technical issues. What I've discovered is that a person of a certain age, they just don't get certain things because... It's not that they're stupid. They're just not really interested in learning. And when you start looking at that, this is what creates a lot of back office work because in a perfect world, you could call up everyone. And if the product has enough margin, you will call up everyone. But if it doesn't, you can't extend the resources to serve that client on that level. Because I'll give you an example. Say it's a $25 product. Then one of my people call and they're making 20 bucks an hour and they spend an hour and a half helping this person. We just lost money. It's that simple. And that numbers are very important. And if you're running a business and you don't know what your product costs, how much money your, your support staff is making you or how much your support staff is costing you, because if your person has to handle this back office thing, and it's just not worth it. Sometimes, you know, I just refunded her money and said, hey, keep it. And you go on. But if this was a $25,000 deal, then I could pretty much dedicate a full-time person to help that project. And they can talk to the customer as much as they want it. Those kind of decisions come when you get scale, when you get customers, and when you're running a robust business. The more people that you get, the more things that you're going to have that will happen in your business. Now, that ends this section. What I'm going to do is put together a better solution for Kiki. So with that, I'll see you in the next video or stay tuned and you can see what I'm going to tell Kiki. Then I'm going to give her a link and point her to this video. Okay, this is for Kiki. And I thought about your question a little bit more. You're 20 years old, so you're in a certain demographic. I still say 15, 20 of your friends, strangers, whatnot, female, and get yourself a notebook and ask them everything that they hate about their body creams. And what you know, put your stuff in there because see, you're in your head. You know your market. You know as a woman what you like, but you're going to forget some stuff because you're in your head. And talking to them will remind you of things that you need to do in creation of your product before you spend any money creating a product or a label or even coming up with a name. Just talk to people. Get yourself a notebook. Like I said, take a lot of notes. If you don't understand something, say, hey, excuse me, please. Could you say that again? And if you treat it like a, a business, it's going to perform like a business. So you should spend a few weeks doing this. Talk to 20, then find another group and preferably strangers and talk to them. And then when you're out and about, you could just see a girl walking. It's like, excuse me, I got a question. I'm thinking about starting this skin cream company. And I just want your input on what would be a good cream for you? Those kind of questions. Just ask a bunch of people. And then as you ask people these questions, you're going to start to see trends. You're going to start to see certain words repeated over and over again you're gonna that's your market that's what you need to make that's also going to give you language for your packaging it's going to give you language for your copy and all this so don't worry about a website right now find out where your market is and then get into the other stuff so that should help you out tremendously so thanks for the call and uh thanks for watching the channel hey you've made it to the end of the video Congratulations, that shows that you have a higher level of attention span than most people. This is what I'm going to do for you. If you act now and go ahead and take my free course, which would be below the Audible offer, 
just sign up for I will teach you how to make money webinars and that will give you your first free course which is an email course and then I've got some goodies for you and some great pricing for some awesome products that will help improve your life help you improve cash flow help you develop cash flow and make more fun money and be a better person so with that I'll see you in the next episode and you have a great day